Coastal Affairs. Today, we're diving headfirst into a momentous occasion that is making waves across Oxford County, Ontario. For the first time in history, all municipalities within Oxford County will proudly raise the rainbow hues of the pride flag this June. Now, it's a landmark achievement, a beacon of progress, and a powerful symbol of inclusion for all of the communities within Oxford County. This momentous occasion isn't just about raising a flag, though. It's about raising Oxford County's voice in solidarity with the LGBTQ plus community members. It's also about proclaiming loudly and proudly that Oxford County, everyone is welcome and everyone is celebrated and everyone belongs. So joining us for today's episode is none other than Oxford County Warden Marcus Ryan, a dedicated advocate for equality and a proud supporter of this historic initiative. This is Municipal Affairs. Warden, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, in June, uh, Canada and around the world will be celebrating Pride Month, and Oxford County is doing an historic movement by raising the Pride flag in every single one of the member communities that make up Oxford County. As the Warden of Oxford County, can you explain how we got to this historic moment? I think we got to this historic moment in the same way that a lot of communities did, which is through a whole lot of struggle. Um, uh, residents on on both sides of the issue, and to be clear, I'm not I'm not generally a both sides politician kind of guy. I think I think there is a right side and a wrong side in this, but residents on both sides have struggled with it for a long time. And I think easy for me to say as a you know heterosexual guy, you know, especially white dude in his fifties in, in in municipal government in Ontario. Um, but I think that anything worth doing is hard. Uh, it's certainly been hard for our communities, but the struggle sometimes can be part of the achievement is to go through the struggle. I think that there are communities in Oxford that have really struggled a lot with it. Um, but sometimes those struggles, you know, engage people who were not engaged on either side of the struggle before. Um, as it goes on, people sort of realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, what, 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 what's, what's going on? I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't think this was a thing. Now I think it's a thing. Where, where, where am I at on this? And that can be good for, again, hard for certain individuals for sure. But for a community as a whole, that can be a good thing to go through that struggle. So I think we got here through struggle, through, through you know, chunks of Oxford communities, you know, struggling, individuals struggling, uh, people becoming more aware. Um, and, uh you know, if if the value of the thing you achieve is measured by the struggle, then I think we've achieved a lot because it's been a lot of struggle and, and it won't be over. Right. I mean, these, th these things, you know, any kind of social advancement is never sort of like there. We decided the new thing now and that's it now. That's not how this goes. Um, the struggle will continue for some people. It'll be harder than others. But I think that um, I think we got there through, frankly, struggle of individual members and communities thinking about what do we really who are we really? What does this really mean to us? And uh, that you know, as I say, it can be a good thing. Raising of the pride flag in any municipality across Canada has become a lightning rod over the last, I would say, year, year and a half. It started in southwestern Ontario, in Alberta. It's just been going under, in Alberta, it's in Westlock County, in Westlock, the town of Westlock. It went through a plebiscite, which was mandated by the provincial government to do that. Even in New Brunswick, we're seeing the raising of a pride flag being very controversial at this time. You're right, progress does sort of have its challenges, but it needs to happen. Why you? Why Why does Oxford County think that this is the right time to do this? Because you could have done it last year, you could have waited till next year when things might have died down. Why in 2024 is it important for you as the warden of Oxford County, but also every single member community of Oxford County to do this in solidarity with the LGBTQ2 plus movement? Well, to be clear, some communities, some area municipalities in Oxford have done it for years, right? Right. The, the county has done it for several years. The city of Woodstock, town of Ingersoll um, have done it for years. Um, some communities in their local councils debated it and decided not to do it. Um, Oxford County Pride did a lot of this work. Oxford County Pride did a lot of just going around and talking to individual councillors, going and talking to councils, uh, talking to communities and explaining why. Um, and I think the answer to why now is is the bigger answer of why does this matter at all? 
I, 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 for, for me in government, I always try to back up as far as I can from an issue and start afresh, sort of like big picture, long term. What's this really mean to our community? And when I think about, I think, I think some of us in government, and and frankly, all kinds of citizens, residents forget democracy is kind of a deal, right? It's this implicit deal, which is we'll give up as citizens the right to decide everything for ourselves. We'll give that to a few select group of people. But part of that deal is that A, the select group of people who make the decisions, I'm privileged enough to be one of those people in my community, have to be transparent and accountable. And the people who are giving up that right to decide have to feel like they are represented in the few who are going to decide. Everything else that we do, whether it's you know plowing the snow off the road or providing a recreation park or whatever, is predicated on that deal being a legitimate deal. Right, that that residents feel like no, it's legitimate. I don't agree with everything they did, but I feel like I was heard. I feel like I'm included, you know, uh, and I get to throw the bums out in four years if I don't like it. Right. So, to me, I back up and I say, so you know, the, the thing that a lot of people have said to me is, you know, why? Not a lot. Some people who oppose the pride flag have said to me is, but but why doesn't the Canadian flag that should represent all of us? Why doesn't it represent all of us? And I said, I hundred percent agree. It should represent all of us. I absolutely agree with you on that. And yet I have some people saying that they don't feel like it does. Why don't we ask them why they don't feel like the Canadian flag is enough? And why don't we not just ask it in a rhetorical way or an argumentative way? Why don't we ask them and actually just sit back and listen to that answer and understand that answer a little bit, right? And to me, when I hear that answer, I hear people saying, I don't feel like I'm included. I don't feel like my views and my perspective are equally considered. Uh, amongst all the other views in the community. And I say, well, if my right to decide on things for that person, their, the rate of tax rate, the services they get for a long-term care home or what, whatever the case may be, that diminishes my ability, my my mandate to, to, to govern. And that's not right. That's sort of like a first principle of democracy to me, of representative democracy is, does everybody feel like they're represented? If somebody says they're not feeling represented, we got to fix that first, right? I mean, let's set aside all the other debates. Until everybody feels like they have a seat at the table, they have the right to have their voice heard, uh, everything else waits until we get that right. So to me, I think uh, Oxford County kind of went through that a little bit. Like, wait a minute, though, is it too much to ask to fly a certain kind of flag to say to people, no, no, you're included. And, and residents have said to me, I wish we didn't have to do that. And I always say the same thing. I say, I say, absolutely. I wish we didn't have to do it too. How about if we do the work so that we don't have to do it? How about we do the work so that someday down the road, people are like, you know what, forget it. I don't, I, it's, I, I don't need it anymore. I feel totally included, not necessary, but we're not there yet. And flying it is not that big a deal to get there. So, okay. So I'm going to play a little bit devil's advocate and anyone who yeah. knows me knows that as, as the gay man who hosts this show, I'm in favor of the pride flag, but I'm going to, because I already, I can already tell that there's going to be people sending me emails or there's going to be comments on YouTube that are attacking your stance here. You're sure. right. There are people who will say the Canadian flag should represent what Canada is and who it should encompass everyone. And I agree with your sentiment that some people don't feel that way, and I completely would agree with that. Are you saying, and I'm going to kind of poke the bear a little bit here, so please attack me if you want. Yeah. yeah. Are you saying that prior to Oxford County raising this pride flag or these municipalities raising the pride flag, the LGBTQ2 plus Canadians did not feel welcomed in Oxford County? So I wouldn't presume to speak for that population. I, I know that there were individuals who have contacted me who said they did not feel that way. Okay. Um, one stark example for me, this was a real, like, you know, for me, um, I generally, I'll take on provincial and federal politicians on issues that directly affect municipal governance. No problem there on policy issues. But I generally don't take them on individually. They were democratically elected. They're in a different level of government, not my farm, not my cows. They do their thing. I do my thing. We stay out of each other's way. Policy differences, let's talk about it. There was one where our then uh, Oxford MP, federal MP, who's not our MP anymore, uh, brought a petition to uh, Parliament. Uh, it was opposing the federal government's uh, ban on um, uh, conversion therapy. And he presented this petition. And that just... I, I just, I could not, I could not contain myself. So I, I 
said on Twitter, I said, no, I tagged him. It was not a subtweet or anything. Tagged him and I said, like, I, this is not right. There are people in our community. This is if this is if this is, you know, this is an issue between, you know, individual people. And if they want any kind of treatments between them and their doctor, we, we, we do not need to be involved in this. This is not right. This is sending a signal to residents, you know, whatever. And I usually don't do that. And I got exactly like you say, you're probably going to get on this and people will come after me for my interview here. You know, people saying that. But I also heard in particular from one mother of a child who I had known since they were in elementary school, not the school that my kids went to, another school that I had visited when I was on council. And this mother reached out to me and said, thank you so much. I'm actually a little bit just telling you this now. She reached out and said, thank you so much, because my daughter's MP sent a, a petition saying somebody should be allowed to consider conversion therapy for her. And she was devastated that her elected representative said that should be allowed to happen. And then the next day she said her mayor sent out a tweet saying, no, that's not right. And she felt like a million bucks again. And, and, you know, I thought like, why should she have ever felt less than a million bucks? Like this is, I know this kid, I'm not going to say much about what this kid did because people figure out who it is and the, and the message was sent to me privately, but this is a great kid. This is a great family. Why should she have ever felt anything less than a million bucks? by any elected official to say to her, oh, you love the wrong person. That's not, that's not, somebody should be able to fix that for, like, it's absurd. So, you know, do I know that the, the entire 2S LGBTQI community of Oxford didn't feel included? No. Do I know that some people, and that wasn't the only example, but that's the one that is the most uh, acute to me. Uh, do I know that some people felt not included? Absolutely. And that, and, and there's no reason for that whatsoever that they should not feel included. So, probably allies can go allies can raise flags which is great it's a good first step for a lot of communities who are struggling to find ways to support the uh lgbtq sorry i, I always get it wrong and i do apologize the, the the lgbtq plus community but it doesn't stop on june 30th though and it doesn't start on june 1st it's something that is always working you're always working what is oxford county doing on the other 11 months out of the year yeah. to ensure that the, this fr pride flag across the county, which is a great first step, doesn't just become a one-off thing and the support is there 12 months of the year, not just one month of the year. I love that question because I am absolutely not one for sort of proclamations and things like that, right? Like I'm I'm very seized by uh, environmental action, for instance, and a lot of people have said to me, you know, but but Zora and Oxford haven't declared a climate emergency. Why not? And I said, well, no, we haven't declared a climate emergency. We're just, we've just we've we have policy in place to move towards 100% renewable energy. I would rather do something about it than proclaim it. Um, likewise. Uh, Zora and Oxford don't have uh, land acknowledgement policies. And people have said, but you're you're passionate about First Nations relations. And I said, absolutely. And until we've had a meaningful conversation with those First Nations, we're not going to do a patronizing land acknowledgement until they have a conversation with us and we decide that we actually want to do a thing that is meaningful for us. So no, we're not going to do it. And likewise on this issue. So in Ontario, uh, by provincial legislation, we are all, all municipalities uh, that provide police services uh, are mandated to have a community safety and well-being plan. And everybody's doing it differently. There's never been one before. Everybody's figuring it out as they go. Uh, in my opinion, some are kind of just checking the box and sort of saying, here's what we already do that could put in the community safety and well-being box. There, we're done. Legislative requirement met. Back to work. Um, Oxford and its all and all its area municipalities, because in Oxford, uh, police is delivered by the area municipalities. Uh, so the Zoras, the Woodstocks, the Ingersoll, Tilsonburg, um, not by the county. Uh, the area municipalities got together to develop their community safety and well-being plans and decided... I think we could do this better if we all partnered together to do it. And then they said, maybe we should partner with the regional government with Oxford County as well, who delivers housing and human services and ambulance. Maybe we could partner with them and do it as well. So all of us got together and do it. It's called the Safe and Well Oxford Plan. I encourage people to look it up online. It's a great plan. Again, it is still very much a growing learning thing. We, we don't know how to do it. Uh, but a large component of that, where there's four main pillars, and one of those pillars is equity, diversity, and inclusion. Because as I said before, how can you make people feel safe and well if they not, do not feel even included in your community? When we did the community surveys to tell us about how it makes you feel safe and well, ranked right up there with, do you have a doctor or do you feel like you're safe from crime was belonging. People ranked that right up there. Like with, with actual medical attention, they said, also, I need to feel like I belong. So to me, um, 
and to Oxford, to the Safe and Well Oxford plan, to all the Oxford area municipalities, that is now a fundamental part of how do we make people safe, feel safe and well. If people feel like they belong, then they will reach out to other community members for supports, whether it's an explicit export, uh, support that they need for a, a mental health issue, or whether it's support for, you know, I think my neighbor knows that we have a same-sex marriage and I think they're uncomfortable with it. What do I do about that? Like, either way, that has to be kind of addressed as a safe and well issue, as a community safety and well-being plan. So we're addressing that in safe and well steering committee meetings monthly. Uh, the Action Coalition on uh, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion is meeting uh, every other month to address that. And it's a fundamental part of our plan for every municipality that delivers, you know, police services, uh, fire, ambulance, mental health and addictions, housing at the county level. Um, that has to be part of that every single day or, and for people who say, well, I don't care, that's not my problem, I say, well, when we did the community survey, it says that if people don't feel like they belong, they rank that up there with all these other services. So so if we just make people feel like they belong, like everyone else, like they should anyway, uh, then, then I'm going to tax you less because they're going to need less other services if they just feel like they belong and they can reach out to their neighbor and their fellow community member. And they're also going to be, you know, feel more enfranchised in voting for their local government. Maybe voter turnout will go up, you know. This is a better thing for a community, no matter what way you slice it. There's lots of people who live lots of different ways in all kinds of ways. People live in apartments, people live in a farm, work different jobs. We should not be judging each other based on how we choose to live our lives unless we're affecting how other people live their lives. And I think this is an issue where if we can just, you know, get to a point where every day people are just allowed to live their life and contribute to their community, we're all better off for that. Do you think this first step that Oxford County is doing, and I say first step as the as the whole Oxford County, not yeah. individual organized individual communities, but Oxford County as a whole, all their member yeah. communities, will make the world a little bit better in a year's time, five years time, twenty years time? Yeah, I guess I I, I was trying to think of these things in terms of potential because when you're in government, you know you you, you govern four years at a time. Uh, nothing nothing really. Uh, really community changing happens like the or, or the effect the full effect doesn't happen within four years you can make the decision but for that to flow through everything and really change your little corner of the world takes a long time so i always try to think of it in terms of what does this policy decision or this action what potential does it give my community right because the other thing is i can stand up there as the mayor or the warden and say blah blah blah, blah whatever um that's fine if if the nine thousand residents of zora the hundred thirty thousand residents of oxford don't don't buy into that vision, then it doesn't make any difference, right? Um, so I think of it in terms of potential. And I think that every community raising that flag on the same day is a signal of potential to our communities to say, you know, we can move forward in a constructive way. We can move forward in a way that says, let's just deal with this. Let, let, let's, let's be a constructive community that has a vision where everybody is in fact included. Let's, let's invest in that instead of the fight over that let's and, and i think there's so i think there's potential in it that, and and honestly um for you know to your question before about do i think that ever that, that, that the two slgbtqi community doesn't feel included in oxford i think there's a i hope i hope that there is a huge signal to those people those people that um that that politically at least we want to put this behind us and say we would rather move forward with discussions about how we are all included than discussions about whether we are all included. I don't want to ask this question, but I think I have to. Are you prepared for the backlash that you might get by doing this? So I would like to say that I am prepared. I don't know that anybody can say they are prepared in 2020, 24 for, for the kind of thing that can happen. I know last year, um, when we had drag story time at Oxford County Library branches, I was, I thought I was prepared for some of the backlash that was going to happen. I was absolutely not. Uh, some of the things that I saw and heard at those libraries, um, they will stick in my memory until the day that I die. Um, at the Ingersoll branch at the Oxford County Library, there was a drag story time. I was inside, great event. Kids, families, moms and dads all having a great time. Uh, when the event was over, we were literally sneaking children and families out the back door of the library. Now, why are you having to sneak children out of the back of a public library? Now, why it gets worse. While we were doing that, 
people who were protesting at the front realized we were sneaking out the back door and moved around the back so that they could catch the kids sneaking out of the library and shout at them there. I, 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 I never anticipated in my wildest dreams. I pictured people would show up and say, I don't think this should happen. I'm fine with it happening, but it shouldn't happen in a public space, whatever those arguments were going to be. Um, but I did not expect that people would go around the back to catch the kids and the families leaving. So I would like to say that I'm prepared for the backlash that will happen this year. But I think that based on the backlash that I saw last year, I probably am not prepared for it. But that doesn't mean we don't do it. The, the struggle, you know, uh, as I said at the beginning, is the struggle. And if the destination is the place we need to be, then struggle we will. And I will tell you my struggle that I experience as a 53-year-old white dude uh, is insignificant compared to the struggle that some of my residents have. So as awkward and uncomfortable as it is for me, it's nothing compared to what other people go through. So if they can deal with that every day, surely I can deal with it for the month of June and then get back to the Safe and Well Oxford work for the other 11 months of the year and, and make it go away. So we have not mentioned the elephant in the room, and that is when is the pride flag being raised? What, when, because you said oh. it's all happening on the same date. And I'm going to kind of put yeah. you on the spot here. It's so on May 31st. First. We're doing it a day early because June 1st is a, is a Saturday, uh, Saturday. And uh, we logistically, we talked with Oxford Pride about it, about, you know, what does it mean to have it on a Saturday as opposed to a Friday? Do we do it on the Monday, the, which would be June 3rd? And we settled out on, let's do it on Friday, May 31st. Fridays are always good, you know, for municipal staff. Fridays usually, municipal councils, Fridays usually relatively quiet. So we thought we could probably maximize uh, participation and attendance if we do it on the Friday. So Friday, May 31st, there's a schedule that's available online at Oxford Pride where the flag is going to go up. It's going to start Oxford County Administration Building, and then it's going to move around the whole county. Um, hopefully, I'm hoping as many uh, elected officials in Oxford will go for the whole tour. I'm certainly going to go to every single one of them that day. I'm going to start off at Oxford County in the morning, raise that one, and then I'm going to go to every other one that day. Again, to your question before, part of it to me is the symbolism of every mayor going and doing this and sort of signaling to people like, this is the decision that's it's being made. This is the path forward. Well, hopefully you'll be keeping us in the loop on social media because I always like to follow your your. I, would, I was about to say Twitter, but it's now X account X. and see what's going on there. Um, but Warden, I want to thank you so much for doing this. And I want to end on this positive note. Why is this important to you? Not to Oxford County, not to you as mayor, but you as Marcus Ryan. Why is this important for you to show your support to this community? So, I mean, I, I, I try to really think when I'm at council, whatever the issue is, I try to think about individual people and what it's going to mean to to them and i don't think i'm not talking about like retail politics like you know give you a grant for this or a discount on that fee or whatever but you know what does it do to the individual people in our communities when we change this policy or that policy whether it's about how we how we construct roads or deliver recreation services or whatever and i know individual people who are members of the 2s lgbtqia community and the ones that I always think about when these debates come up are kids that I know, kids that my kids know. I have an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old. And they have friends that are members of the 2S LGBTQIA community. And they're really good kids. Like, they're good people. Like, they're teenagers that I am happy to have my kids as have, have them as friends, right? As, as a parent, you know, that's always a worry for your kids your whole life is, who are my kids hanging out with? Are they good kids? Are they a good influence? Are they good people? My kids have friends who are members of the 2S LGBTQIA community and they're good people. As a parent, that's what you want is your kids to make good choices. And the number one choice they make is who are the other people that I hang out with? So then this debate comes along and it says, does it really matter? You know, should we fly that flag? Shouldn't everybody feel included? And I'm like, I know kids, children, the literal physical future of our community who feel worried about this. They they don't want people to know. The example I gave you before, they don't want people to know. And I'm like, why does that girl not want people to know who she is? She is a good kid. Everybody should know. Everybody should know who this kid is, who she fully is, because she's a good person. So to me, my motivation is, I, I'm not going to do this job forever. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? The, the, I will not be the last mayor of Zora or the last warden of Oxford County. Somebody's going to do this job after me. I hope that somebody comes along and does a better job than me. It could be somebody who's a member of the 2S LGBTQI community. That would be like, I don't care. Do the job. Do a better job than me. I don't care who you love, right? Just 
just contribute to your community. And I know people in our community who are part of that community who are good people and I want them to be included. I don't want anybody to not feel that they can contribute or they're not considered. And especially when I think of kids, it just, it just kills me that some of these kids would feel that they could not contribute as fully or participate as fully as they can. Warden, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. Um, for those who are listening and those who are watching, the links to the Warden's social media accounts are in the show notes, but also the link to the Oxford Inclusion pay, uh, document is in the show notes as well. So I highly recommend you check that out. I will be doing that right afterwards because I think it's important to always learn and always uh, in municipal government, it's never about just borrowing. It's about stealing the good from other municipalities. So Let's steal it and let's make it our own. Uh, Warden, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. I, I really cannot speak highly enough of the coverage that you give to municipal government, which does not get nearly enough coverage, in my opinion. Um, you do great coverage. You talk to great people. You ask great questions. You challenge, as you said to me. I don't know if I should ask this, but I always say, ask away, fire away. It's my job to have answers. And, and if I don't have good enough answers, it's my job to be judged for not having them. So. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We're your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged on what the issues are across Candom. So your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.